You're watching a Muharram a special. I'm Jawad Hami. Muharram is one of the most significant and uh, sacred months for the Muslims around the world. Uh, where it marks the beginning of uh, Islamic New Year, it also reminds us about the painful incidents of uh, Karbala when the onslaught of tyranny by the rulers of the time was unleashed on the family of Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and uh, the companions. This particular month reminds us of uh, the supreme sacrifice rendered by Hazrat Imam Hussain Razilahu Ta'ala Anhu and his companions for the sanctity and the protection of Islam. Although this month brings in immense sadness, yet at the same time also establishes a platform for introspection and course correction in the light of the great message of Hazrat Imam Hussain Razilahu Ta'ala Anhu and his companions. Let's bring in quickly our esteemed panel of guests today who are joining us in the studio to talk about this incident which so profoundly shaped the course of history and which will act as a guide for generations to come. We are honored to have been joined in the studio by Professor Dr. Mustafiz Ahmed Albi. He is a religious scholar, former Dean of Social Sciences at National University of Modern Language. This uh, Dr. Alvi, thank you very much for your time, thank for being with us on this uh, particular show. Also, we are honored to have been joined in the show by Dr. Sahib Zada Shahir Elahi, his social scientist and associate professor also. Uh, Dr. Elahi, thank you very much for your time, also for being with us on uh, this particular show. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, uh, you, uh, uh, Dr. Alvi. Uh, this particular incident of Karbala sets a very clear distinction between uh, right and wrong, good and evil. Uh, let's uh, refresh our memories uh, regarding uh, the events of this particular incident that happened. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of uh, Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Uh, I'm privileged uh, to have this uh, show with us uh, on the topic. Uh, like uh, martyrdom of uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, in fact, Islam uh, is a submission to Allah Almighty, the Creator, wholeheartedly. And uh, what a Muslim does is that uh, one believes in Islam means to submit all energies uh, in favor of Islam up to even the sacrifice of life and sources of. In this regard, we see uh, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, who was uh, not only the Muslim spiritual leader at that time, the utmost type, uh, title, but also as uh, being member of the family of Prophet Muhammad sallam. He uh, thought about himself that his status was to uh, to protect Islam in the sense that the political system on the other side the religious uh, dogmas must be go going in line with the practices of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam and uh, the pious caliphate which was developed by the uh, established uh, companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallam. Now there was a deviation uh, uh, on the uh, on behalf of the rulers that they were changing some of the basic paradigms of political system that were introduced by Prophet Muhammad Sallam. And now uh, Imam Hussain Islam stood for uh, as Quran says Kunu qawwamina bil qist Kunu shuhada lillah and uh, this message was to, to stand up uh, with the original principles uh, of Islam that guide uh, uh, Islamic rulers to be on the right path. Now, uh, Imam Hussain saw that there was observed, he rather uh, observed minutely that there were some uh, drastic changes in the basic paradigm of political system uh, under Islam. And now he was the only person to, to revive the original path. So he stood up along with his uh, companions, his family members. And uh, what he actually at that time have done is that he revived and tried his best to revive the Islamic political original system that was introduced by 
Prophet Muhammad Sallam and that was continued uh, and uh, re-established by uh, the caliphate system. So uh, the message and the whole uh, uh, epitome of his effort was to revive Islam politically on the right path that was set by Prophet Muhammad Sallam and his wise uh, uh, companions. Right, uh, uh, Dr. Elahi, uh, please would you like to shed light uh, regarding uh, this in incident and uh, the kind of supreme sacrifice um, Hazrat Imam Hussain Ta'ala Anhu has rendered for the sanctity and the protection of Islam, uh, for the revival of the original principles of Islam as far as the political system uh, is concerned. Um, it sets out a clear distinction between uh, two uh, phenomena, uh, the right and the wrong, the yeah. good and the evil. Yes, and very rightly put by Dr. Alvi. Uh, any civilization whosoever has uh, marked on the earth, on the surface, on the grounds of mankind, requires some sort of symbolism. Hossein Razilan gave us the symbol of that apitomy, that excellence, that righteousness. The dilemma is that when we translate certain terminologies from English or in English, it doesn't give us the right essence of the message. So what Dr. Ali Shariati said about Sayyidna Imam Hussein Razilan, that he is uh, the excellence of Isar and Qurbani, which cannot be translated as sacrifice or altruism. It is way better than that. Isar is something according to Quran and Sunnah, which is done for the highest supreme message without any vested interest what sort of what humans can think of. The other bit is what I think what Dr. Alvi has put very clearly stated that Hussein Razilan is the combination of the highest thought and the deepest passion of the mankind. Look, all of us, the humans, are either spread horizontally or vertically. This particular personality, the family of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Sayyidna Imam Ali Mukam, Hussain Razi Allah, and the companion, set a significant standard of keeping both the horizontality which is the political system and the verticality which is the spirituality together and very beautifully put by a Persian poet Muhammad Gul Ast or Ali Ruwe Gul Muhammad peace be upon him is like the flower out of which the entire beauty the peace comes in this universe and Ali Razi Allah, is like the petals of that flower Muhammad Gul Ast or Ali Ruwe Gul Shuda Fatima Darmia Bue Gul. And in the middle of it, the fragrance is from the training of Sayyidna Fatima Razialanha. Chumitrash Baramad Husainu Hassan. And in this humidity of tyranny which those rulers created, the fragrance, the essence, the juice came out as the message given by Hasnani Kariman Rizwan Alahim Ajmain. Motar Aza Shud Zamino Zaman. And the beauty of this message is that it cannot be put under the carpet or the dust of the centuries. The beauty of this message, of this symbolism is, the height of the symbolism is, that it cannot be eaten by centuries. Even if you and me are alive or not, you and me are going to talk about it or not, Imam Hussain will still be alive. With all of his message, his priorities, which he has said very, very clearly, on the day of Karbala, on the battlefield, during the journey, while talking to his companions. It is like a complete constitution, not just for the Muslims, but for the entire mankind. That's what Bhagat Kabir once said. Sab nadiyan jal bhar bhar rahiya, sagar ke bind khari, sadhu karman ki gat niyari. Whosoever talks about philosophy, intellect, leaves no space for practice. Imam Hussain joins both. The intellect, the passion, the reality, the spirituality, and the practice, which is the sacrifice, the Isar, Qurbani. And I'm sorry I'm loss of words when it comes to translating these huge terminologies. And I think Dr. Al Alvi would definitely add to it. Isar and Qurbani are those words that cannot be somehow equated with sacrifice or altruism. It's a way bigger terminology. 
our lingua franca stands on this incidence. What I've just said is very important. Our entire lang structure, the lang structure of the Muslim Ummah, from the Arab Peninsula to the Far East, stands on the lang structure, on the terminologies, on the practice given, proposed, messaged by Imam Ali Muqam Hussain Raziallahu Anh. And we are greatly indebted by so many schools of Islam who has protected it over the years. Uh, beautifully uh, put down, um, uh, Dr. Ilahi. Uh, what I understand is the great uh, supreme sacrifice rendered by Hazrat Imam Hussain Razilah Ta'ala Anhu uh, transcends uh, the bounds and the constraints of the time and it would be uh, serving as a guide for the generations uh, to uh, come. Uh, Dr. Alvi, uh, would you like to shed uh, light regarding this phenomenon of great sacrifice and isar? Uh, in fact, we are, when we see the Holy Quran saying about the, uh, the faithful uh, that, uh, that they are always uh, having sacrifice for others. And uh, on the other side, Quran says that uh, one, uh, if one claims to be a Muslim, it means that uh, a Muslim will on one side harmonize with the laws of nature around the universe and on the other side individually putting all energies in favor to, uh, to correct each and every uh, aspect of life in the way as Prophet and the Holy Quran has uh, mentioned and detailed. So Imam Hussain actually at that time was uh, the only leader uh, intellectually, spiritually, both. Uh, uh, he was on uh, a status that uh, he could lead uh, the Ummah at that time right way. So Imam Hussain actually uh, revived the path that was now being deviated by the rulers. On the other side, uh, we can see that uh, Imam Hussain was not on, on, on the, uh, to, to confront the ruling elite only. He was actually fighting for a social justice and social reform as well. Because uh, after Hazrat Ali's uh, uh, period of caliphate, uh, we see through the history that there were big change in the whole paradigm of uh, ruling as well as the, the Muslim state was now uh, 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 in, uh, disintegrating and that's the spiritual path on the other side, the intellectual uh, in exchequer of Muslims and the practice uh, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam and the holy uh, companions of the Prophet uh, just going astray. So Imam Hussain on the one side uh, tried to uh, tried his best putting all energies in the way of Islam and uh, giving sacrifice to of his family, his resources, his, his place of living and lodging, his brothers, his sisters, his, his family, and even uh, 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 innocent uh, 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 younger uh, progeny of him. And he actually was of the view that the right path should be protected at any cost. And whatever the sacrifice and price he can pay, that was uh, on cards. And, uh, on the other side, we see uh, this incident is uh, a great turning point in the Islamic history uh, to protect and to check the society deviating from the right path and the ruling elite uh, to deviating and disintegrating the whole system. And uh, Islamic monarchy uh, was in uh, on the way to establish and he was only a person to check it and uh, it is almost you know thousand and uh, uh, plus years that we see today but uh, Hussain is alive and Yazid was uh, so this is actually a turning point in the whole history that everything that got gone to past uh, and uh, Imam Hussain's role model is today alive for us and the life to come. It is an eternal role model for a Muslim to stand for deen, 
to stand for society, to stand for Allah's cause, and to stand uh, for Quran's message. Uh, as uh, Allama Iqbal says, the Ramz Quran az Hussein a Mukhtim. So uh, what I have learned, uh, uh, Quran's uh, 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 secrets, uh, I have learned through uh, Hussein's uh, role model. So this is how we can see this was a great turning point. Some of the scholars I have uh, uh, heard about that the, this was not just a turning point. There are many other turn, turning points, but I see. Uh, as we see the political history, spiritual and social uh, paradigm of Islam, we can see easily that it was a great paradigm shift, that people was uh, accepting monarchical system. And uh, it was Hussein and his companions and his followers then uh, who stood against this monarchy that was established by Umayyads. And now the history was changing all the course, but he turned the tables altogether. And we see that that message, we can easily see that uh, we are just mourning on Ashura. Uh, but uh, if we look into the message, uh, that conveys the role model played by uh, Imam Hussein. That it was, uh, we see as an incident, a sad incident, and we have to just mourn about it. And we have to just feel some shed uh, uh, feelings of grief and pain only. But I think what we have to ponder over it is that what was the real message that was uh, Hussein's uh, effort. And it was just to revive the original path. And th this should not be uh, given uh, deviating. And uh, secondly, uh, we see in the history Incidents like uh, Karbala, there are many, but uh, you will never, never see the everlasting impact it has created up to the whole humanity. Look at Hussain, Kaum ko, Insan ko bedar to ho lene do, har Kaum pukare ki hamare hai Hussain. So Hussain became a symbol uh, of uh, righteousness, a symbol of uh, uh, setting the things correct, a symbol to revive the whole phenomena that was established by Quran as a revealed message and Prophet Muhammad Sallam and his finality of prophethood that he has uh, given the final shape to Islam. And now this shape should not be de-shaped at any cost. And what price he could pay for it, that became uh, as a sad story for us only. The message in between was to how to be a true Muslim in the true sense, kunu shuhada ala nas. You are witness on the truth revealed by God Almighty, and you are now witness being shaheed. You are witness and you are testimony for others. You are role model for others. So this is what Hussein's message actually is. And we should not be only mourning it, but we should be having this uh, contentment, trust, and confidence that this sacrifice is the hallmark of a Muslim. And it should be celebrated that at any price, at any cost, we have to live for Islam. We have not to die for Islam only. We have to live upon Islam and for Islam. And this is what the message should be uh, given to us. Right, Dr. Ila, he's standing up for the cause of Islam, no matter whatever the cost, uh, just as uh, Hazrat Imam Hussain uh, uh, paid for in uh, a form of the companions lost, uh, the beloved family members lost. Uh, what message uh, should be learned from it today uh, as Muslims are faced with challenges all around the world? The modern man is facing a lot of dilemmas in this world. From postmodernism to feminism, there are so many theoretical debates. The beauty of the message of Imam Ali Mukam Hussain Razilani is it's so beautiful, composite and compound and exclusive and inclusive at the same time that if I as an individual want to learn something, as a sad person being lamented by that incident, I can learn anything out of it. If we want to learn as a collective humanity, we can learn out of it. 
if we want to expand to society and culture and civilization, the beauty of the message is that it has chunk, it has pieces of messages for everyone living on this earth and will may live on this earth. So the entire message divided under the divine supervision of Imam Ali Mukam in those 72 martyrs of Karbala is for 72 different types and categories of people around the world. Even if you're depressed or anxious, you don't see a way, you don't find any brightness, see Hussain. If you want to write literature, learn from him. You have read Krukshetra Mahabharat, now read Karbala. So the beauty is that it adds to every aspect of human life, to societies, to cultures, and very beautifully put by Dr. Alvi. The basic idea is that no matter what, unjust will remain unjust, but it cannot cross the bloodline of Imam Hussain Raziallahan. So he was the one who crossed it. He made a clear cut distinction, a demarcation, that from here it's just, from mm -hmm. here it's unjust. That is exactly why the leader of the opposite army, Hor, Raziallahan, came to Imam Hussain, alayhi salam, for higher seriousness, for higher perception, for higher morality. So which clearly states that we all humans are at different levels of morality, different levels of seriousness, different levels of living, existence. Hussain gives us the prime message, what beautifully put by Dr. Alvi. One, how to live, and two, how to gracefully die. Look, we humans, we just keep on fighting how to live nine to five, just fight another day more. Hussain gave us this beautiful message that I should not be scared of death anymore. My death has meaning and it is so meaningful. Hakdi Ramaz Pichati Hu, Maranthi Age Marge Bahu Jina Hakdi Ramaz Pichati Hu. He gives you that message, that essence that if you die, submit in the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be dead again. This is the beauty. So if I want to take that chunk as an individual, it satisfies me. If I want to take messages as a society, it gives me an entire constitution. If I want to learn, it gives me a symbol as a civilization. So it is at all levels. Role model of Sayyidina Imam Ali Mukam is that is exactly why not just the property rights of Muslims. He is equally celebrated and lamented by other religions in other parts of the world. Imagine the exclusivity and the inclusivity of Sayyidina Imam Ali Bukam. Right, uh, Dr. Alvi, uh, you already mentioned a number of times uh, the phenomenon of deviation. So uh, this particular incident also uh, makes us understand the deviation from the true principles and the spirit of Islam. Uh, when specifically we talk about greed and lust for power, it can have a f um, phenomenal detrimental uh, effect uh, on the one who is pursuing on these lines and eventually becoming a tyrant. Yes, uh, Jawasap, you have put it rightly. Uh, in fact, what deviations were taking place at that time, you see, on one side, the law of of inheritance were in place. Uh, now, Islam has uh, nothing to do with this uh, monarchical system which uh, precedes like that uh, son takes place uh, uh, of the, the father. And uh, this monarchy, our uh, absolute uh, monarchical system uh, was against Islamic principle. Because Islam gave us a principle of bayah Baya stands for an agreement and a sacred contract between the ruler and the ruled. And that Baya is uh, upon the basic principles of submission to God Almighty, uh, the Creator. And this Baya was now uh, manipulated in the form of law of inheritance. And that uh, uh, actually was the continuation of uh, uh, Iranian, old Iranian and other 
uh, you saw uh, you see the the Persian and the Roman uh, uh, kingship and the institution Zoroastrian of kingship. Yeah. kingship. Yeah. So th it was uh, against uh, actually the caliphate itself was a new experiment uh, in the middle uh, ages uh, of the political system. <coughs> Uh, you see Professor Arnold's book, uh, The Caliphate, he also mentioned, a Christian writer, but he mentions that the caliphate uh, was a different and unique system. Now, this system uh, amalgamated uh, the on, on one side the democratic uh, principles of uh, social uh, justice, and on the other side, the uh, unity of command in the form of the ruler. And uh, this unique system was in place before Umayyads came into power. And uh, on the on, on other side, we see, uh, uh, you can recall it, that the institution of Baya was deviating and manipulated negatively. And the public exchequer now becoming a public, uh, uh, rather than becoming a public property, it was owned by the king or uh, his uh, family. And thirdly, we see the social norms set by uh, the values established by the caliphate system and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu himself, that was now uh, being destroyed in the name of, uh, you can say, pride and prejudice uh, of uh, old tribal systems. Uh, again, we see the deviation in uh, the uh, religious uh, teachings in the sense that uh, all children of Adam were equal uh, in front of law and the Islamic principle was the equality and equity of Muslims. <coughs> and on the other side, their relationship with the non-Muslim citizens of Islamic State. Uh, all these principles now, or at, uh, you, you can see that there were some type of deviations. And uh, these deviations must be kept in mind when we see uh, Hussein uh, al-Islam's character and role model. On the other side, you pointed out uh, uh, that uh, the, the world today, we are living in a modern or uh, postmodern world. We make, uh, as Muslims, if we, we call upon uh, Muslims <coughs> making the 24% of the human population. And it is the second largest religion, if you call a religion, as following uh, Jesus Christ and after uh, we see uh, uh, Muslims uh, and uh, the Muslims uh, today are facing many problems. F first of all, is the the leadership crisis. You see, there are no role models amongst us, and uh, uh, this uh, 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 incident of Karbala and the role model of uh, Imam Hussein al-Islam fills this gap. That how uh, a leader should emerge with a message of uh, revival and right path and rightness. On one side, we see Imam Hussein worshipping Almighty in, at nights. And the day, we see that he fights against evil. And he puts all energies into the favor of the right and the good at that time. Now, the Muslim, on, uh, on the other side, we see a, a illiteracy problem, we see that we are away from religion, we are av away from education, we are away from the, the, the society around us. And uh, we are actually hiding our nose into the sands of this ignorance. Uh, so Imam Hussain's message is to, to stand up with knowledge of deen, with knowledge of Quran, with knowledge of uh, 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 the society, uh, for social justice uh, and for the future of the humanity, as whole humanity. Allah Iqbal says that Islam ka maqsood faqat millat adam So Islam needs and demands that the whole humanity should come under one umbrella. And that message uh, today needs to be spread all around. And, th and lastly, I will put this, this final point on the same uh, topic, that is, uh, Muslims today are all around uh, in a state of denial. Mentally, they are not accepting all realities around them. And they are not thinking that, uh, uh, that 
what the world demands today. And I think today the leadership uh, uh, crisis and the role model crisis is not of only the Muslims, but it is for the whole mankind that we are following <laughs> models only. We are having no role models. So uh, it demands that we should stand up. Uh, oh. So this character is an eternal character. So we have to go back to that character. And it will rescue today even the Muslims. And uh, Islam always comes to rescue Muslims. But uh, unfortunately, the Muslims are failing to rescue Islam. So uh, what I think is that today's world also demands that uh, the Hakikat Shabiri and role model of Imam Hussain, that was in, uh, you, you see, a knowledgeable leader, spiritually equipped and mentally uh, uh, standardized with Quran and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, if we remain ignorant of the realities around us and again we remain ignorant of uh, Hussain's character, uh, we are just shedding shadows upon the character uh, by just mourning and feeling pain only. I will say that we must uh, 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 instruct and guide our youth to go to uh, studying Quran and studying Hussain's character uh, along with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we will find that uh, this world is against Islam's world. But uh, if we uh, remain in the state of denial that we are not go uh, going to analyze the situation uh, we are not going to have a real picture of the world around us. We are not going to have a real picture of the challenges faced by uh, Muslims uh, and Muslim nations around the world. We are uh, ignorant of the challenges that politically we face, the challenges e uh, in the field of economy we are facing, the challenges uh, regarding peace in the world today, that Islam having the main message of peace only, but we are blamed, being blamed, uh, and uh, truly uh, sometimes we are actually culprit. So, and sometimes we are just blamed, but a Muslim had to stand up with the real message of Islam. That goes uh, back to Karbala, and that goes to future as well, if we are equipped with this message. Right, uh, Dr. Elahi, how detrimental as per your understanding uh, when the deviation from the true principles and spirit of Islam happens to be when specifically from this incident we learn that there was sheer greed and the lust of power yeah. uh, and also which was designed for the concentration of wealth and power in some specific hands. Look, uh, any belief or belief system is made up of many ideas. Every idea requires an actualizer. Look. There is an idea of charity, but how to give charity requires some sort of practice. An actualizer would come, maybe as a messenger sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the shape of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and then to roll on till the last day of mankind. We need certain actualizers. For example, when we say tyranny, deviation, mores, norms, social values, degradation, these are all ideas. And there was another guy standing in front of all these ideas, bringing his ideas with an actualized form. For example, sacrifice for Islam. How to sacrifice for Islam? For example, give charity to the needy. How to give charity to the needy? So Hussain's message in this regard is so absolute and with so finality given, written, directed as beautifully done by him at Karbala, that it actualizes a lot of ideas of Islam. For example, one idea which was still or left behind by Prophet Muhammad to be actualized later, he never received the status of martyr. But his grandson came on the canvas of the mankind 
and became the martyr. That's how the family of prophets become martyrs. So this is so beautiful. When the family of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stands, it gives an alert message to the mankind, to the ummah, and rest of the world that this is the right way to talk to the tyranny, talk to the opposition, talk to the political philosophy, which is unjust. <coughs> and these ideas needs to be practiced in this manner. For example, we say we all are thirsty, but the thirst has been given a new meaning by Imam Ali Mokam, by his practice. So ideas and actualization of the ideas. The, any, the root of any civilization is to produce actualizers. We are so lucky and indebted to still have the idea endorsed, well placed, an actualizer who has practiced those ideas at the battlefield of Karbala. But what Dr. Alvi has put is a real dilemma. What is shaking all of us, the Muslim Ummah, the nation, all of us in different age brackets is that first to learn those ideas and then to learn those ideas from the right actualizers. So the problem is that there is a gap between the idea and the role model, the actualizers. We keep on instilling ideas, copy-pasted ideas. We keep on diffusing, we keep on implementing certain role models on our children, upcoming generation, though we have supreme role models at our end. So this is what the issue is. There is this gap, the void, which needs to be filled right now, must now, as stated by Dr. Alvi. So being lamented, this is the right way to be grieved to be saddened. This is the excellence of mankind to be sad. But this is the right way to do it. His entire descendants, Imam Ali Mukam, then showed us these ideas and how to practice them. As a long run, results to be taken out of them for the greatness of mankind. So the beauty of this incident of the Karbala is that Lemons, sadness, that's one end. The other end is that idea is not just locale bound. It can be practiced, it can be envisioned, it can be engulfed, it can be practiced. So the beauty is that it has given us the magic, the magic of death. So any Muslim, if he or she is scared of death, should not be qualified as a Muslim. So this is the first prerequisite set by Imam uh, Ali Mukam Hussain Razi Allah. Imagine the bar set by Imam Ali Mukam. So we all, if shaken by lust, if taken away by greed, which, is, which, which stems from the fear of death, longevity of life, right? So the beauty of the message is that you can overcome, you can sail through all these hurdles if you have that idea and the actualizer in your mind without any gap, and which is Imam Ali Mukam and his beautiful companions and his family, Rizwan Alahi Majmaeen. So, so in that regard, what happens to be the responsibility of uh, religious scholars in particular in order to fill that gap? One, we have lost the departments of translation studies. We do not study social sciences at all. We lack behind in social sciences, for example, because in order to reform any political philosophy, social ideas, values, we must generate literature, evidence-based research, right? So we lack behind as religious scholars, as religious schools, and we are unable to understand the sensitivity of the situation. On <coughs> one hand, there is this uh, excellence of science, and on the other hand, we are being terrified by the science, though we are greater than science in so many ways. The quantum physics, the quantum mechanics, they all prove it now. The point is that we are following the path, becoming the trend follower, not becoming the trend setters. Imam Hussain is whom? A trend setter. Unless my role model is not a trend setter, I won't be a trend setter. This is where we are lagging behind. The other responsibility lies heavily on the policy makers and the academia. It should be the part of the curricula because it addresses what? The agency of thought process, the agency of how to live. This is what we, are, we all are made up of. 
if that agency is taken away, it can be filled by anything, lust, greed, freedom, free will, anything, right? So in order to put the ummah and the nation on the right track, we must, first of all, produce enough literature through these ideas and the actualizers of the ideas, role models. That is exactly why a Theodore Roosevelt brought up this idea because we have manifested as Muslims and they learn from us. He brought up this idea that we humans are moving from human capital to social capital to now spiritual capital. And according to his theory, the spiritual capital is made up of three measurable indicators, faith, forgiveness, courage. And Dr. Ali Shariati says, Hussain gives you all of these. So in order to become a super nation, a complete individual, you need faith and then forgiveness, and then courage. Faith in oneness, forgiveness for the <coughs> mankind, courage to die and to live. So this is the beauty. Right, uh, Dr. Alvi, uh, now uh, specifically talking about the role of uh, women uh, uh, during this particular incident, the kind of uh, the exemplary patience they exhibited uh, when the tyranny uh, was unleashed uh, during these days. On one side, we see uh, the, the role of uh, women and ladies uh, uh, upon the incident. And uh, at that time, uh, how it was uh, youth <coughs> treated and how it was uh, uh, brought up. Uh, on the other side, I see uh, that uh, women status uh, uh, and uh, duties uh, are more than rights. And I think uh, women are the mothers of future. And if women are mother of the future, so first uh, we have to produce Fatima <laughs> if we need uh. Hussein. So if uh, uh, Fatima's role should be studied again and again. Uh, what I focus is that uh, we should revisit our debates and narratives. Oh, beautiful. Uh, debates uh, are upon the, the religious community, as you have pointed out, and Dr. Shakir was uh, 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 putting light to it, that uh, they are just uh, uh, in frivolous debates, and they uh, are just defending and attacking and uh, something like that. Some are apologetics and some are attackers. But what debate should be uh, discussed is, what was Hussein's role and what was his message? On the other side, what was the role of women at that time? And how did they actually brought up their youngers to face the realities? Uh, and how they uh, treated uh, themselves uh, being a Muslim woman and uh, a, a messenger of peace and uh, calm and for social justice working for we see. Uh, and uh, I think that Dr. Uh, Shakir will also agree that there is no debate of they and us. Uh, it is all humanity yeah. and Islam is for all and Muslims are for all. So we must revive this character of uh, Muslim women and uh, Hazrat Fatima uh, is the role model for us. His uh, attributive name, Batul, that stands for uh, inclusively and exclusively to, to all Almighty. And this role will actually intellectually give us an exchequer of uh, courage, isar, sacrifice, and uh, devotion uh, to humanity as a whole. We right. shouldn't be thinking about uh, only Karbala for Muslims. The Karbalas are there right. for the whole humanity. Right. Uh, unfortunately, we're short of time. Uh, Dr. Elahi, uh, quickly about the role and the kind of exemplary uh, patience they exhibited. Especially the women and the children. It gives you the idea of the social bond, the cornerstone of any civilization, which is how to be patient, and how to be vigilant at the same time. And above all, with this patience, you don't leave oratory. You still take the seat of the oratory, and you still charge, and you still march. 
even if not through muscles, through intellect, through patience, through heart, through devotion. So this is the idea behind the patience. The glory which is forever. Dr. Saibzada Shahir, a social scientist and associate professor, thank you very much for taking time out for this um, Muharram special show. We really uh, appreciate that. And also, we were joined in the studio by Professor Dr. Mustafiz Ahmad Alvi, religious scholar, former dean of social sciences at National University of Modern thank Languages. You. It was uh, indeed an enlightening discussion. Both of you, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming to this particular show of Muharram special. With that, we come to the end of uh, this uh, Muharram special show. Thank you very much for being with us.